Good morning guys. Today we're going to work with uh, quantitative data, not so much from a calculating standpoint, uh, but from more of a display standpoint. So displaying means visualizing, means working with different types of graphs. So as we've talked previously, quantitative data is data that's measurable. Uh, height, weight, speed, age, those types of things, things that we can measure, put on a number line, uh, calculate averages. So today we're going to focus on the number line portion of that more than the average portion of that. All right, so our setup for today is um, this study right here. Uh, so we want to know who's calling. A sample of 14 year olds from the UK was randomly selected using the census at school website. Here are the heights of those students, uh, and we measured in centimeters. So we've separated them into males and females. And we've got all these male heights, we've got all these female heights. So because it's quantitative, it's a measurement, it's a count, it makes sense to rank these people. Um, we're going to use a number line, and the first number line um, type of graph we're going to work with is actually going to be a dot plot. So a dot plot right here, you've worked with these before, uh, maybe I'll call them uh, line plots or something like that. So we've got one for the males, one for the females. So let's just kind of go through and get a picture of what each of these looks like. So the way it works is I just take a number line, going from my smallest value to my largest value. So my smallest male, it looks like he's 151 centimeters. My tallest male looks like he's 187 centimeters. So I want to cover 151 to 187. So I just went like 150 about to 190. So that should cover the whole thing. Now the reason I've got the exact same scale with the females, even though they're considerably smaller, um, I think that, well, I'm not going to say, we don't know for sure they're smaller, but you look at them, they don't have 187 for anything. Um, but the reason I have them the same, even though the tallest female is I think 169 centimeters, is because if I'm going to compare these in a little while, I like having the same number lines so I can see where they're located on those number lines. Let me show you. Uh, so let's start with the male. I'll show you how to do dot plot, and I'll let you try to get the female dot plot on there. So it's really straightforward. Find a value. Um, 154. So we go over to 154, and we make a dot. That's why it's called a dot plot. So what we see is each individual, I mean, each person or object we gathered that on, each individual is its own, is a separate dot. So we just go through and work out. Um, got 157, 187. A 165, and then we've got another 165. So how do we deal with that? Well, the way we deal with that is if each individual is a separate dot, I don't care about these dots as their heights, I don't care about those dots as like people. So each person has to show up. So if I've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17, I better have 17 dots here. So when we get a duplicate, now I'm just going to stack it up. So you're going to stack repeat values. So when you have an multiple individuals that take on the same value, you just stack those dots up. But remember, keep things level, okay? So my level one dots are all level. If I have a bunch of level twos, um, then they would be stacked up. If I had some people or some values that had three, I would keep those stacked up. All right, so let's go 183 and then 180. So that is the 17 males that we calculated heights on. Let's double check, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17 males. All right, now I want you guys to take a minute and I want you to plot the female heights for me using that same strategy we just talked about. As far as each one gives us one value, okay? or each individual gives us um, one dot, and then if you get repeats, just stack them up and try to keep them aligned up. So I'll give you a few seconds to get that, or a few minutes to get that kind of graphed up, and I'll wait right here for you. All right, so hopefully you were able to get something that looks similar to this graph for uh, female heights right there. 
So we've got our male height. We see how they lay out. We've got our female height. Now let's go over and let's talk about what we can do with these graphs. So a dot plot, one way to get that information graphically, visually organized for us. Now we're going to look at once we see a graph of quantitative data, how do we kind of describe what's going on? Now to describe quantitative data, the four things that we want to hit are shape, outliers, center, and spread. Those give us a really good picture of what's going on with the data set without us having to visually see it. That's how we can communicate to others what uh, these, this quantitative data has actually um, appeared to appear for us. All right, so the first thing I'm talking about is shape. So shape, there are really three shapes that we focus on and there are other special ones that can kind of come in. So the first one is symmetric. Symmetric should sound kind of familiar. You gotta use that word a lot. Symmetric means symmetry, means the same on both ends. So typically a symmetric graph is something that would have a shape, look something like that. You have most of your data in the middle and some of your, or just a very little on the, on the tail ends right there. So that's usually what symmetric data uh, goes on to look like. Not always, I mean, there are other symmetrics, we'll talk about another hand. Right, then we have uh, right skew and left skew. Now skew is kind of a word that a lot of people throw around, but they don't use it in the same sense that we do. A lot of times when we think skew, you think of something that's just not right, it's kind of off kilter or something like that. So skew for what we're talking about is something that's really just not symmetric. So that's what we mean by in the same sense as uh, skew the way we use it kind of in our common language. So right skew, left skew is something that's not going to be symmetric. It's not going to be bulk of the data in the middle and then little tails. It's actually going to have the bulk of the data on one side and then a tail out on the other side. So that's what we mean by skew. So right skew is actually going to be off kilter on the right side. That's what we want to think about. If it's skew, we think skew means not right or messed up. That means not symmetric on the right side. So right skew means that the tail is on the right side. So the bulk of your data is over here on the left and then it drags out to the right. That's a right skew distribution. Left skew means the opposite. So in left skew, we're talking about the tail again. It's on the left side. So that means that bulk your data is on the right and then it tails off to the left. Get a better drawing there for you. So we have most of our data. So if we covered that up, it would look a lot more symmetric. So it's really the left side that's skewing it. You have very few values out on the low end. Or in a right skew, you have very few values out on the right end. So that's what we mean by left skew and right skew. Make sure we get those because those are going to be commonly used uh, descriptors for quantitative data that we're going to use all throughout this course. Uh, two other ones we don't come across very well. We don't typically focus on them as much. If we see it, we need to call it out. But these are the three that we usually focus on. But bimodal uh, is one that we'll mention often. So, or sorry, sometimes. So bimodal, bi meaning two, mode being like we usually think most often. So with bimodal, it has two peaks. So that's what bimodal is. It's a data set with two peaks. So maybe something like that. Two peaks. All right, now we can be bimodal and we can be skewed or we can be symmetric, things like that. Uh, maybe this one's a little bit bimodal and skewed to the right, or right skew. Uh, you could have a bimodal that's symmetric. It could look something like that. It's the same on both sides. It's that mirror image, roughly. But it just has two peaks instead of one peak. So that's what bimodal means. It has two peaks. So if we see it, we can say the data set appears to be bimodal. Uniform is different. Um, but it's actually not different. Right? Uniform means everybody, like if you wear a uniform to work, it means you're wearing the same thing as everybody else, or a uniform to school. So uniform means that everybody's the same. So in a uniform distribution, it may look something like that. Right? There's no clear peak. There's no one value or a few values that, have, that occur more often than others. So for uniform, you just say there's no or sorry, if you see something with no clear peak, then we would say it's uniform. 
Now, I'm drawing these data sets as smooth curve. We've talked about dot plots at the moment, right? So it's like if I just connected all the tops of each of those stats, that's what we would begin. That's how you get that smooth curve that we're talking about. Um, this is something that we got coming up later. This is like the graph of a continuous distribution instead of uh, something here that's more um, discrete where we have certain values we're counting. All right, so that's what we mean by shape. We're looking for symmetric, right skew, left skew. Is, does it appear to maybe be uniform where nothing really takes the lead? Uh, is it bimodal? Do we have multiple peaks? Um, we also, when we're describing shape, we might talk about clusters and gaps. So if you saw a lot of your data located in one area and then another chunk or another cluster of data at the other end of the graph, that's worth mentioning because there may be some underlying phenomenon going on that's causing those two distinct portions. So maybe there's another variable we need to investigate to see why all that data wasn't kind of grouped together. So if we notice clusters or if we notice gaps, we want to make sure we mention them in our description. Uh, but these are kind of the formal words for the overall shape and trend of the data. Uh, next, we want to talk about outliers. This is another word that you have a little experience with. Um, so an outlier, well, I mean, just think about what an outlier, something that lies outside, right? So an outlier, an unusual feature, for what most of you guys think of, you think of it as just a value that's far away from all the others. All right, most of my data was over here and I got one guy that's hanging out. So uh, maybe in our height of females over here, we can see them all there. And you think an outlier might be if we had a female that was way up here, right? She'd be an outlier. Okay. That's an outlier when you're talking about one quantitative variable. I wanna think more, more broadly there and let's just think outliers in general. If she was out here, why she's an outlier is because she's different from the others, okay? So a different, in this case, means much taller. If we were comparing more variables, maybe it's different, meaning she doesn't follow a certain pattern like the other, uh, or a trend that the other points did. So I like to think an outlier is just something, a value or values, that don't follow the trend. values that don't follow the trend of the data set. All right, so if we had a female that was sitting out here, she would be an outlier because the trend is for the female heights to be down here, not up here. Okay? So that's what we're talking about right there. Values that don't follow the trend of the data set. Or in one variable, far away um, values. And we'll talk later about how far is far away. At what point does something become uh, moved from being just kind of an abnormal thing or something that's just a little bit different from the others to be truly an outlier. All right, so we've talked about shape, talked about outliers. All right, two other things we really want to describe because this tells me what it all looks like. This tells me our, where are the crazy points at. Well, two other things we really, really want to know is how consistent is the data and where's the data located? And that's what shape and spread, or sorry, center and spread talk to us about. They give us an idea of where the data is located and they tell us how consistent. Is there a clear pattern? Is it chunky? Is it really spread out? Is it all clustered up together? So out of these two, center is the one that's telling us the middle of the graph, right? So the middle, for what we say, I don't talk center very often, you're really gonna hear me refer to it as a typical value. And typical, that's in quotation. Because a lot of people hear typical value, like because this is kind of how it's worded for you in a lot of our work. A lot of people will hear typical value, and they're like, okay, it's the one that occurs most often, like the most. Typical value, I like to think of as my one best guess. My one number, best guess. 
So that the idea on that is, if I gave you one guess at it, what number do you feel like would be closest to really getting the overall picture look right? So if I'm going talking about a basketball team, so we're thinking height still. If I'm talking like an NBA team, and I said, well, what's the typical height of an NBA player? And I gave you one guess at it, I think a good guess would probably be, I don't know, six, seven. Six, seven seems reasonable because it's gonna be close to those shorter players that are in the six, three, six, four range. And it's still close to the top end players that are the six, nine, seven foot, seven foot four, those guys. So it's still gonna be my one number that best describes the entire group. That's what we're talking about with center. It's towards the middle of the distribution. Now, we'll talk about when do we need it to be dead middle or when do we want it to just be kind of close to the middle depending on how, what values we use and how we use them. That, that stuff's gonna come up. But right now you just need to get the idea. Center is our one number that kind of summarizes where this data set's located. Now spread is the other side of it. How consistent is that data? Okay. So spread literally describes how spread out is the data. How spread out is the data? Now, I think of spread kind of two ways. I think of big spread and I think kind of internal spread. So big spread to me is like how much total space does it cover, start to finish type deal, okay? So total space covered. All right, so that would be um, like we've talked before, or not we haven't talked before, but you've worked for like range, what's my low number, what's my high number, okay? So that would be like a range situation. We're gonna talk more specifics about doing calculations. We're just trying to talk general vocabulary right now. And then I like to think, I know where I start, where I finish, but just because I know where something starts, where something finishes, really doesn't just tell me what's going on on the inside, right? If I told you that a basketball team had uh, their smallest player was five foot four and their tallest player is seven foot one, does that really tell you much about the team, right? Do I have a really good image of what's going on with that team? No, so I don't know, is this a tall team? Is this a short team? Is this kind of an evenly distributed team? That just one really short player or one really tall player? So it doesn't give us an idea of what's going on on the inside. So that's where spread also, we want to talk other numbers that'll give us about internal spread. And these are some values you probably haven't talked about before. We're going to uh, talk about them, uh, but that would be things like uh, standard deviation and stuff like that. So internal spread kind of gives us an idea about the distance between actual points, not just start to finish, but how spread out are the actual points. The distance between points. Squeeze it all in there. So internal spread gives us an idea about the distance between the points, so within the distribution. And then the big spread tells us, right, where does it start, where does it finish? What total area did it cover? All right, so I know how consistent. All right, so spread is how spread out the data is. We, we like to think for spread in terms of variability. And that's kind of the key word for spread. What's the variability of the data? How much does it vary from one value to the next or one section of the distribution to the next? All right, so those are the four things that you really, really want to hit on when you're describing a quantitative distribution. I want to know what, what the shape is, okay? I want to know what the outliers are. I want to know what the center is. I want to know what the spread is. So the way I kind of uh, have learned to remember this, shape, outlier, center, spread. Shape starts with an S. Outlier starts with an O. Center starts with a C, and then spread starts with an S. So the way I've learned it is to describe your size. When you're describing quantitative, a quantitative distribution, you're just describing your size, your shape, outlier, center, and spread. So we're gonna reference that all the time. You know, they, well, how do I describe this one? Well, what, is your, what do your socks look like? 
That's how we want to think about it. Describe your socks. And you hit those four things, it's going to tell me what the data set looks like. And if I know what it looks like, then I can get an idea of how to go about and analyze it. I can figure out what numbers to crunch on it. I can figure out uh, how to best go about maybe calculating some confidence intervals or running hypothesis tests and things like that we're going to get together down the road. But it all starts with this first, uh, you know, very superficial analysis of it. Right, now that we know how to describe using socks, let's kind of look at the example we had here and see if we can do a little bit of uh, socks descriptions right here. All right, so on these, this mail graph right here, shape, outlier, center, spread. Let's just do a little superficial description. What do we think the shape is? Do we get a really good picture of what the shape is? Do we feel like it's most of the data in the middle and then kind of flat? Or do we feel like it's kind of uniform with no shape? Do we feel like it's clustered? Well, if I'm looking at that, I don't really see much shape to it, right? It's really spread out. It's really flat. It's just one dot, one dot, one dot, one dot, one dot. I don't see many clusters. I don't see many gaps in there. So by this one, just the way it initially looks, I might say that it um, appears uniform. I think that's a good description of the socks on this one. All right. What about uh, outlier? Do we see any values that are just way out from the others? Things are just different? No, because every time you see a point, you go a couple more points, you know, two or three centimeters, and you got another one. Then about two or three centimeters, and you got another one. So it's pretty consistent right there. So I don't really see any. All right, so I'm going to say no obvious outliers in this case. All right, what about C for center? Center, where do we feel like the middle of our distribution is? So if I got one number to guess what I should go with, one number to say, what's the typical height for these guys? What's my one number best guess? I'm probably gonna say something around here, maybe, maybe 166 centimeters, approximately 166 centimeters. Not because it's in the middle of the number line, because I feel like that one's close to these and close to those, and it's you know the best one I can come up with. And then the spread. Spread, do we feel like, so we got two spreads I want to talk about. Talk about a big spread. So overall values vary by, what's that, 151 to 187? So varied by, um, I just can't keep track, 36, right? 36 centimeters. So total varied, the total that we varied by was 36 centimeters. That's a pretty big spread. That's a lot. It seems to be a lot of variability in there. Um, I think say with about, that looks like it's probably about two centimeters between each person, maybe on average, you know, so about two centimeters between individuals. Now, it's a pretty consistent spread, up by two, up by two, up by two. So we get those ideas right there. So that's how we can describe these socks for the mayor. All right, I want you guys to take a second right here. I want you all to describe the socks for the females, the shape, the outlier, and the center of spread. And I'll wait right here for you. All right, now hopefully you came up with something that looks like what I got. So right here you can see my socks, I believe, as probably less. You said tough ones, very uniform here, but it looks like most of the data is clustered here. You get a couple of values over here on a little bit lower end, maybe stretched out a little more to the left. So maybe a left skew type distribution. Uh, again, no obvious outliers. All of these are fairly close together. That's only a couple centimeters, even though we have that gap right there. Um, approximately 161 for the center. I feel like 161 centimeter female would be pretty descriptive. And then spread. Vary by 17 centimeters overall. So that's 152 up to 169. And then this one looks like there's about one centimeter. Then you got another couple people, then another centimeter, then another couple people, then another centimeter. So I thought there's about one centimeter between each of those. So we can see how we can describe what's going on graphically with these four things shape, outlier, center, spread. We know where it's located, we know how it's spread out, and we know kind of what shape it actually takes on the pattern of the data.